I, if you don't mind, very briefly I tell you, Matthew, Matthew, in his gospel, he says, Jesus took bread, when he speaks about the institution of the Eucharist, he took bread, he blessed it, and he gave it to his apostles, saying, at the last supper, no? he gave, saying, take this and eat, take this and eat. So, you follow, I right? think those, remember those words. Take this and eat. Right, he wrote his gospel after Mark wrote the gospel. And Mark says the same thing. So, Matthew copied Mark's gospel. Then Luke wrote the gospel after Matthew. Mark first, Matthew, Luke. Now, Luke doesn't say the same words. Luke says that Jesus took the Bread, the host, he blessed it, he broke it, and he tells his apostles, Do this in memory of me. Do what? He broke the host in memory of me. Then we come to John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John does not speak about the institution of the Eucharist. John chapter 13, it's very interesting, he speaks about the washing of the feet of his apostles, how Jesus washes the feet of the apostles and after he washed the feet of the apostles, he tells them, do this in memory of me, do what? Be humble. He doesn't want you to go around washing everyone's feet, it's not that, go around, no. He wanted you to be, wanted us to be humble, to be of service to others, to love others, to be humble. Because in that custom, uh, in Lyon, in the Jewish custom, before the, a meal, before a meal, they, are, they had slaves. It was custom, okay, or simply in their culture, it was all right. The slaves used to go and wash the feet of the guests. So we are here in the case of the apostles at the last supper when Jesus went to wash the feet of the apostles they were a little taken aback and that's why remember what St. Peter says I will never let you wash my feet only slaves did that that's why Peter reacted so but Jesus washed the feet of the apostles as a gesture of love service before the meal and humility so after that, Jesus says, do this in memory of me. So today's understanding of that text is, he did, doesn't ask us to go around washing the feet of everyone, but he tells us to break the bread of our life, our life. Break the bread of our life means to be humble, to be of service to others. That's what he meant. Be humble, break the bread of your life. Break, do this in memory of me. That's what St. Luke tells us. Then we come to Paul. Where does Paul speak about the Eucharist in all his letters? Right? In 1 Corinthians 11, he speaks about the Eucharist. The only place he speaks about the Eucharist. And this is what he says in one context. When he's writing to the Corinthians, in that particular passage, he's holding the Corinthians. He said, now this is what he says in that chapter, you must read, I think it's 2 Corinthians 11. He tells them, what is this I hear about you? I heard that when you are all come together to share a meal, that's what they were supposed to do. At that time, they didn't have like this, giving a host. They brought food and they shared. That was their Eucharist. So St. Paul is writing in this letter to them, to the Corinthians, what is this I hear about you? That when you come together for a meal, that each one brings food to share, and then you are quickly eat the food that you brought without sharing with the poor, those who are poorer than you. You drink the wine, you get drunk, that's how they, you know, that was normal. He says, how can you all do this? This is not the meaning of the Eucharist. 
because what they did in the early church, the time of St. Paul, the time of the apostles after Jesus died, they came together to share a meal. Every family brought a little food. They put their, all the food on the table and then they all shared, including the poor people who could not bring food. But he comes to know that the Corinthians were doing a different thing. That they were not, they were brought their food, they quickly ate their own food and did not share with the others nor with the poor. So St. Paul writes and scolds them and reminds them of the real meaning of the Eucharist. And reminds them in his letter that Jesus said to do this in memory of me. Do what in memory of me? Jesus was not selfish. Jesus was other centered. So for Jesus to break the host means to break the bread of our life. And that means we have to make a sacrifice. Uh, you know, it's very interesting, Leon, it's not to be critical of the church, but what happens in the church, was, what happened was, the church, we only took what Matthew said. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul. I gave you from all the five scripture, uh, the gospel, the letters of St. Paul, I just shared with you what he said about the Eucharist. But the church, till today, they have only taken what Matthew said. What did Matthew say? Matthew said, the first take and eat. Right? So we are doing that. Father says, body of Christ, take and eat. So we put out our tongue and we receive the Eucharist. But what about the real meaning of the Eucharist? So we receive the Eucharist, we go for Mass, we receive communion, and we are very happy that we went for Mass, that we received communion, that we made adoration. But during the whole day, what is our life? All the people who come to church every day, all the people who go for Mass on Sundays, what is the difference between us and the other religious people? Between us and our politicians? Are we living a life worthy of Christ? Are we bread broken for a better world? That's my question. Till at such time in the Catholic Church that we give a new meaning to the Eucharist, you know, and that we are told in the church, just coming and receive communion, receive, uh, receiving communion and going back is not enough. Your whole life during the whole day has to be Eucharist. Your whole life during the whole day has to be Eucharist. And what does that mean? To be at the center. To break, to break, break your life for the sake of others. Is it clear? That's the meaning of under our understanding of the Eucharist. And that's why we stress so much about sharing with the poor. Because there are people in our own country here who don't have their daily bread. I know people who come to our door. I have three people in particular with whom I am very close, poor people. And I think I can experience the pinch of poverty in their life, how much they are suffering. You know, and there's nothing, we are fully concerned, nothing is lacking in my life. Nothing is lacking. And I don't think anything is lacking in your life. But what about the people in our country who don't have their daily bread? Because their husbands are drunkards. I hope we never start drinking. You know? Never, never, never start drinking. Do you smoke? Sorry. Do you smoke cigarettes? Thank God. Don't start. Look, that will ruin your that will kill you. Today so many people are dying of lung cancer. And men who drink, they treat their wives and children very badly. I have enough examples of that. Enough examples. So I pray that you will never start drinking. Never. Okay? 
So it will a lot depends on the type of friends you have, Leon. If you have friends who drink, they will force you to do it. If you have friends who are who don't drink, you go for parties with them, you join them, your life will be saved. <laughs> so <laughs> what does it mean to be brain broken for others? In other words, to be other centered. So this is the meaning of our Eucharistic vocation. Franciscan vocation, our Marian vocation, our Eucharistic vocation, which really is an offering, offering of ourselves, our missionary vocation. And we have a fifth dimension in our charism, and that is universality, international. Mother Foundress, from the day she started the congregation, she wanted us to be universal. In other words, not to be nationalistic, not to be racial minded. <coughs> Sorry, not to be racial minded, not to be uh, ethnic minded. From day one, from the first day, she began our congregation, the FMMs, Franciscan Missionaries of Mary. She insisted on that. So from the beginning, Leon, she took local vocations wherever we were founded. When she first came to Sri Lanka to found our congregation, she took local vocations immediately. Immediately. Some of the congregations waited 30, 40 years to take local vocations. Because especially the Europeans, they, they were not sure how the local vocations we can live with them in the same community. That was a mentality at that time. There are some congregation no. Here were all foreigners, but then in any local vocation one presented, you know, herself and said she wanted to be an FMM, immediately she was taken. So we had Sri Lankan sisters from the very beginning of our foundation in Sri Lanka, 1876. Seven, sorry, 1886. From the very beginning, we had local vocations. Thank God. In all our countries, in many countries in Asia, Africa, like South America, we had local vocations from the time the foreigners came there. Right? And that is why we are, we are very international. Very international. Right? Of course, our government doesn't give visas for missionaries, foreign missionaries anymore. But many foreign missionaries died in our country. If you go to the cemetery, you will, from the names, you will see the number of foreign missionaries who have died in our country. Plenty. And now they won't give visas for missionaries, but we get visas for students. So we have a number of sisters who have come here and I told you to study English. You will see them tomorrow. Right? Really, in this community we have 14. 14. But seven have gone for a retreat. So they are not here. You will see the other seven tomorrow. We have two from Myanmar, that's Burma. Two from Indonesia. We have one from Africa. We have one from Pakistan. So it's a nice community, a nice community. We are very international, but unfortunately the others are not here. Ah, we have two years. Others have gone for a retreat. Seven of them have gone. But you will see at least seven tomorrow. So we are very international. We make sure that we have our communities, even in Sri Lanka. Even in Sri Lanka, all our communities are mixed. Mixed means Sikhanis and Tamil. We don't have, have any communities where we are only Sikhanis or only Tamil. Even in the predominantly Tamil areas, we have one or two Sikhanis sisters. Predominantly Sikhanis areas, we have one or two Tamil sisters. Everywhere, in every community. And so much so, uh, it's not to, you know, speak, uh, boast about my congregation. Bishops have come and asked us for new foundations in their diocese. 
because they say we want mixed communities in our diocese. We are from Vitalis or we are from Vitalis. We want a community mixed and we know the FMMs have mixed communities. So we are very careful about our interracial living, inter-ethnic living. So that is our fifth aspect of the charism. Franciscan, Marian, missionary, adorer, and international. Can you remember the five? Yeah. You can? <laughs> okay, try to remember. We are Franciscan, Franciscan very good. Marian, very good. Ma missionary, very good. And uh, international. And? And prayer. Adorance. Adorance. Eucharistic. Eucharistic. Good. Very good. So, this is what you are called to live now when you make your promises tomorrow. Huh? When you make your promises, you are promising to live the five aspects of our uh, charism. So, every day we have like, many opportunities to be a Franciscan. We have many opportunities to be like Mary, to practice her virtues. Her virtues. Not only Marian devotion, go beyond the devotion. We have many opportunities to be a missionary. Isn't it? To manifest the love of God. We have many, we have the opportunity to be an adorer. Even you don't have to come to the chapel every day to be an adorer. Wherever you are, you can be Eucharist. Have you understood what it means to be Eucharist? And wherever you are, you can, uh, by the way you treat the people of the, the other races and religions, you can show that you go beyond all barriers of race and religion. What does it mean? You know, your relationship with people of all races and all religions. Now, I know sometimes today there is a certain uh, negative attitude towards Muslims uh, after what happened in our churches and the hotels. But we have to really go out of our way to be kind to them, you know, to smile at them, to greet them. Now we have to. Muslim children in our nursery. Muslim, quite a few. So when I see these Muslim babies, I am the first to always greet them. Now, because of they at the beginning they were even afraid to smile at us, thinking that we were all angry with them. You know, we can't blame all the Muslims for what happened. There were a few extremists who did it. So I think a lot depends now on our attitude. That's what it means to be independent day associate. Right? To go beyond barriers of races and religions and ethnicity. Okay? We have, I suppose in your office we have people of all races and religions. Ah, oh, sure. Yes. We have many opportunities. Wherever you are. Isn't it? Okay, so this is what I, I very briefly I explained to you about the charism. Now uh, I'm sorry. You need, when you have time, you will look up the internet and you will.